Okay, Tony Finau, right fresh off of his win. This was shot in Dubai. And the cool thing about this video is we get a little bit of the waggles too, because I know a lot of you guys at home are seeing his waggles. And this is some of this is really good for you, and some of this is uh, probably pretty unique for Tony. Um, there's some things I gotta be honest, I don't find myself encouraging on a daily basis when it comes to amateurs. So um, I think it's pretty obvious that he kind of sets up his lower body closed and his upper body a little bit open. So again, that pelvis would be a tiny bit, uh, or the toe line would be a little bit closed or pointed to the right, kind of like that. But his rib cage and his pelvis are a little bit to the left. Now watch this waggle. I mean, Hogan, don't discount the waggle at home if you're watching this. Hogan wrote a whole chapter on how to waggle the club properly, okay? they Great players do everything on purpose. So when you're watching this at home, you can see that he's actually waggling. Uh, he's encouraging pronation in the lead forearm, early pronation. So he's getting the club inside and more open. Now this is the one part where I'm going to tell you, you know, to be honest with you, I don't spend a lot of my day with amateur golfers encouraging that. If anything, a lot of them that I see with a double digit handicap have a lot of early pronation and get the club inside the hands immediately in the backswing. But Hogan did talk about this. He talked about letting the toe travel in the backswing. In other words, feeling as though the club got as open as it possibly could all the way to the top of the swing. So this is nothing new, especially with great players. Probably you see this from somebody that is trying to uh, kind of hold off a hook. You also see in his downswing rehearsal, though he has kind of, again, rolled the club to the inside and open, there is an emphasis here on flattening the shaft, so shallowing the golf club. Again, that club is definitely inside his hands, shallower, and again, feeling almost like, one more on his little waggle here, look how his hands disappear left. So he gets the shaft in his waggle. This is all of his feels. And by the way, feel is all that matters at the championship level. Well, results are what matters, but the only way they get the results is from their feels. And sometimes even the best players in the world, what they're feeling isn't what's actually happening. So he is definitely flattening the club, albeit with a face that's pretty dynamically open that you can see he goes into wrist flexion right there. Okay, so he's bowing. He's bowing the glove out towards where the golf ball would be. But watch his hands. So now that the club is inside the hands that much, it's also going to make him want to arc them around the corner and make it disappear again to the left. And that is definitely a hallmark of elite-level championship golf. So basically, getting the path of the hands to disappear and arc around them to the left while moving up, you're going to see that rehearsal from a lot of tour players, okay? Especially those that ever battle from being stuck or from the inside. Now, we'll, we'll zoom in on him a little bit, and we'll see, does that waggle match his golf swing? So you can see that little miniature as he's shifting his feet, which he's shifting pressure between the lead foot and the trail foot. As he's shifting that, did you see that? He made a miniature version, a miniature move of that very pronounced waggle he had behind the golf ball. Okay, again, where he felt like the toe of the club opened and the club would go to the inside. Let's see if he actually does it. Okay, again, there's a more pronounced waggle pretty much how he looked from behind the ball. Okay, so here we go. Now what you see there is the club perhaps, and I don't believe this camera is at a 90 degree angle, the club is per, it probably in line with the hands and that is not way inside the hands with the amount of forearm roll that he had before. And you could see that the club face isn't wide open. It's more in a toe-up position.
position. So I would bet you that if we were at a 90 degree angle, his lead arm and his hands would be over his toe line, the toe of the club would be pointed up. And again, for usually for a taller golfer, that's the case. Lead arm parallel back. You can see that the club is pointing inside the golf ball. Again, that's another hallmark for some of the longest drivers. And you can see a little bit of wrist extension right there. Now from the top, we know that he rehearsed shallowing the club. So let's see if he does that. So there's a little bit of drop in the hands, but definitely shallowing the club inside the hands, just like he rehearsed. And you can see the wrist flexion right there and his club, as it comes down, is not nearly as open as he rehearsed it during his swing. So usually, a, someone that rehearses what you see with his pronation, the rolling of the face open, is someone that's usually guarding against the left shot. That's really right down Broadway. That's perfect right there. You can see some of my favorite things amongst the best uh, drivers in the history of the game is that their trail side is more down, so they have... Uh, bend in their right arm so they have late arc width that's usually someone that has a lot of control over the flat spot in the bottom of their swing again a hallmark of great ball strikers so he is in posture and rotated and you see trail foot eversion which a lot of you on the internet call banking and basically he's keeping his trail foot down and you can take that to the bank that'll help you rotate and that's what he's trying to do. He wants his hands to go left. The problem is when the handle gets high and they go right. So he's going to stay a little bit more plugged into the ground. He's going to get his lead side to open up a little bit more. And you can see there's no way he has pressure underneath his lead toe uh, through impact because it's off the ground. So he has early pressure to the lead heel. He is going to be more linear with his pressure trace because his trail foot is down which will get his lead side to open up more. Again, not everything Tony does anymore is for distance. So he's not gonna push up from the ground with a tremendous amount of vertical motion. He's really trying to use a lot of rotary motion through the ball to stabilize the club face and the club path. And you can see more of that around finish in terms of his exit, as opposed to the uh, thumbs up uh, high shaft look that it's so many uh, club level players who battle blocks and hooks has. He has a really low exit, face isn't twisted on that much right there, and then it finishes more around him. Feels not always real. He's definitely shallowed the shaft like he did in his rehearsal, but he didn't open the face near as much dynamically as he did in that rehearsal. That's probably something Tony feels like he can't feel enough of in his swing to go with his path of his hands exiting up and left as he stays into the ground torquing and rotating his lead side open through impact. A lot of good stuff here, especially if you're a better player who battles a block and a hook. Um, look at Tony Finau's swing. His first win on the PGA Tour, it was a long time coming. Congrats to Tony and congrats to Boyd Summerhays, uh, who has obviously been the architect of one of the, one of the best games in golf today.